Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Hey, in this video, we're going to be taking... Uh, uh, three, two, one. In this video, we're going to be looking at widget.newButton. And if you take a look at the documentation on the Corona Labs website, uh, you'll see that there's a lot of stuff here. But the cool thing is, the button widget is one of the easiest to use. So let's dive right into that. And this is the start of the code. This is your main.lua uh, that you'll get. And of course, you'll have a main-complete.lua. And that has everything in it. Don't look at that first. Use main.lua uh, first and copy along with what I'm doing here. That's the best way to learn. And so right up at the top, we've got the comments. We are including our widget here. Remember, we're not using the uh, built-in widget library. We're using the one that we download from GitHub. Uh, then we've got the screen coordinates variables that I like to put in there. A background to make things pretty and then we're only going to be doing two things here in this video we're going to be creating a function that'll handle what happens when we tap the button or release the button we're actually going to do both of those and then we're going to create the button and I said it was easy so let's go ahead and dive right into that and we're going to call our button button and that equals widget dot new button and then um, one of these curly bracket things and they actually have a real name. I don't know what it is, right? I think they're braces. Uh, label equals, let's say we're using this to connect to an, a server or something like that. And that's it. That's all we have to do to actually create the button, period. That's it. Let's go ahead and run this and try it. And there we have it. Now it's, now it's not where we want it on the screen necessarily, um, but that is it. So if we wanted to put it on the screen somewhere else, let's just say, uh, button.x equals center x. Let's go ahead and just center it. Button.y equals center y. And take a look at that. Now we've got it in the center of the screen. It clicks just right. Um, if we click down on it and move our mouse away from it, it unclicks, which is, which is the proper behavior of a button. So it doesn't do anything yet though, but that's really easy to fix. So let's go and do on release. And just to give you a hint, and we'll, we'll uh, look at it a little bit later, but there's also an on press. Uh, so why am I doing on press versus on release? Because when you, let me bring this back up here. To my way of thinking, um, if I click this, oops, and I make a mistake, and I pull my finger off and let go, nothing should happen. That's my way of thinking. And I think that's human interest guidelines kind of thinking also. So that means that you don't actually want it to happen when you click. You want it to happen, or when you press, you want it to happen when you let go of it, when you release it. So let's go with on release here. So we're giving it the name of a function, which we'll create in a moment. So on release equals um, uh, a button released because I can't think of a creative name right now. So we need to create a function, and we'll do that up here. Function button released, and it passes in an event record, but we're really not even going to need the event record here because we know that it's only coming in when the button is released. So we don't have to check for phases or anything like that. So let's just uh, go ahead and say released so that we know when that happened. And let's go ahead and try this. And when I click this, nothing should happen. If I pull off and then let up on the thing, nothing happens. It's only when I release it, when I'm actually over the button, that it says released over here in the terminal. So we know that it is working perfectly. Okay, so that's how easy it is. Using the widget library, to stick a button up on the screen. Now, what's really cool about this is if you're actually doing, if you're doing games, uh, I know this is a business app course, but uh, a lot of us do business apps and games. This is even cool for game stuff because a lot of times, especially when you're getting started, you just need to have a button to do something, you know, that to play or to choose a level or to go to the options or whatever. So really quickly with basically one line of code, uh, you can have the the button up on the screen and then you can make it pretty later you can make it actually look like your game later and what you're going to see in one of the upcoming videos is exactly how to do that so this this whole the whole button widget thing is really uh, dual purpose it's great for business apps it's great for games um, and and so what you're learning here in these videos will serve you well for both of those
Now I mentioned that you can do on release, you can do on press. So just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and do on press and we'll call that button pressed. And we'll create a separate function up here. And we'll just go ahead and say it will be, it'll say pressed. So now when I click connect, it says press. And you can see here as I click and hold, it actually says pressed and nothing happens when I let up. So it's actually going on the press, not on the release. And if we wanted to, we could actually have both of those on here so that we could do something on the press and something on the release. So let's go ahead and look at that. And I'm going to click and we get pressed and I release and I get released. So I click and now if I move, I get pressed. If I move off, I don't get released. Like we said, uh, it handles that correctly. If you pull your finger off the button and then let up, it shouldn't actually go to that function at all. Now there's one more thing that you can do here. And to show you this, I'm going to go ahead and break this off into separate lines because this is going to get uh, big and long and I don't want to scroll sideways if I don't have to. So there's also on event and let's say let's just say it's called the uh, button tapped so if we go back up here and we create local function button tapped it's going to pass in the event record and we'll make a local variable called phase equals event dot phase if you've done uh, touch event and tap events, you already know what this is, and I'm going to assume that you have done that. You probably wouldn't be taking this course if you were a complete beginner. So now let's say if phase equals began, then, and we can do something here. Um, but for right now, actually, let's just go ahead and print the phase so that we can see what is happening. And just to keep it from... Running into everything else, we'll do that so we can see phase and whatever it is. All right, so now we have a button that has three different events happening on it. And I've obviously done something wrong here because nothing is working. And here is the problem. The problem is that you can have on press and on release at the same time, but you can't have those when you have on event. So you can... Do the easy stuff where you're not looking for the event dot phase and things like that. Or you can do the more complicated stuff, more comprehensive stuff, but you can't do those both at the same time. So now we'll comment those out. Go ahead and run this. And now when we click connect, it shows phase begin, phase ended. I'm going to go ahead and click and move. And we get the moved in there. And we get canceled because I was off of the button when I actually re removed my finger, removed the mouse, unclicked, untapped, basically, released the button. Okay, so the, uh, the easiest way, of course, is just using on press or on release. If those don't work for you and you need to capture the different phases of the tap, then you have on event and that is available for you. Most of the time uh, for the button, you're probably going to use uh, probably on release because, like I said, you want it to act correctly. So there you go. There's a quick look at the widget button and how easy it is to put it on the screen, and it looks good, and it's usable, and it's fast. Now, what about making it look a little different, because this is just a gray, plain old button? Yeah, we can do that, and we'll get into customizing this in the next video.